We are now going to look at a couple examples. The first is this bar that's been bent and there is a pin connection at A, a roller connection at B, as well as a distributed load along the bottom horizontal portion of the bar. The first thing we're going to want to do is determine the reactions at A and B at the pin and the roller as well as determine the internal force um, at point D, which is right here, the midway point in the horizontal section. As with most static problems, what we're going to do is draw a free body diagram. Um, you may recall that our free body diagram is a body that's free from its surroundings. And so here's our body, free of its surroundings. Then we um, start to apply our forces. We have our active loads, and we have um, our distributed uh, load, this two kilonewton per meter load on the horizontal portion. And so we'll include that right here. It's important to also include the units and then, um, and we'll put the distances in a few minutes. Then we also need to include the reactions. So at A, we have a pin connection, and uh, the pin connection allows uh, rotation, but does not allow um, any uh, translation. So we'll include a vertical component, we'll call this AY, and a horizontal component, we'll call it AX. And then our final uh, force that we want to include is our roller connection at B and that is just a vertical component it's normal to the uh, surface here and so we'll call this BY and for this problem since we're not getting given any information about the mass of our bar we will uh, neglect weight the final thing that we want to include or the second to final thing is our distances our um, any kind of distance that we may have here. And so we see that this slanted distance is six meters. It's orientated at 45 degrees from the horizontal. Let me see if I can make my horizontal a little more horizontal. And this horizontal portion is six meters long. And for now, we're not interested in point D, so we don't need the three meters. And then the final um, piece of information that we need to complete our free body diagram is to include a coordinate system. And so we will have a coordinate system that's typical, X horizontal, Y vertical, and then our positive moment is counterclockwise. Once we have our free body diagram complete, we actually do not need um, our original diagram. And so we can get rid of that. Our free body diagram should stand alone. There should be no extra information that's needed in our free body diagram. Whenever we solve any of our problems to determine our reactions at AX, AY, and BY, all those um, of values should be right from our free body diagram. So let's go ahead and begin that. What we're going to do is we are going to start by summing the uh, forces, summing the forces in the x direction. So the sum of force in the x direction is equal to zero. That's because our body is in static equilibrium. And so what we have in the x direction is ax and then there's nothing else and so we have AX is equal to zero and that's a pretty straightforward one. Now let's look at summing the forces. Well if we sum the force in the Y direction we have two unknowns so what we're better off doing is actually summing the moments and we're going to sum the moments about point B here. So sum the moments about point B is also equal to zero and we will start to include uh, the moments that we have here. So the 
forces that create a moment about B is AY. AX is equal to zero, so that does not create a moment about B. And our distributor load, so let's start with AY. So we have AY, and its distance from point B, its perpendicular distance from point B is equal to six meters plus six meters times the cosine 45 degrees. And this is creating a negative moment. It's going in the opposite direction of our positive coordinate system. So we're going to give that to be negative. And then we have the moment created by our uh, distributed load. Let's see if I can change the color on this. And so our distributed load actually ends up making a resultant load here. And that resultant load is two kilonewton meters, or per meter, I should say, times six meters. It's actually equal to 12 kilonewtons. And so we have a 12, let me go back to red. Twelve kilonewtons, and that is at a distance, which is the midpoint of the horizontal portion, which is three meters, and so it's a distance of three meters, and that is creating a positive moment. So we'll include a positive side, and so the sum of those two moments is equal to zero. Solving for AY, we get that AY is equal to 3.52 kilonewtons. Our final um, unknown is BY, and we can determine what BY is by summing the forces in the Y direction. So we'll do that now. Summing the forces in the Y direction is equal to zero. And so we have AY minus our 12 kilonewtons from our distributed load plus by is equal to zero and of course we just solved for ay so that is known and now we will solve for by and by is equal to 8.48 kilonewtons The next portion of this problem is to determine the internal forces at point D. What we will have to do is make a free body diagram with a section at D exposed. Now when we do this, we can either make a free body diagram of the left hand side or a free body diagram of the right hand side. And it doesn't quite matter which one we choose as long as we do it correctly. Uh, but for simplicity's sake, we are going to make a free body diagram of the right hand side. We will make our free body diagram. Again, just a simplified body. We will include our distributed load, two kilonewtons per meter. Now that's only acting on a three meter portion because that's as long as our portion is here. Then we have our reaction and Our reaction is what we found earlier, which is 8.48 kilonewtons, and that's our reaction at B. That's the same as what we had here at B in our previous slide, and that's going upward. And then finally, we have our internal forces, and let me just change our color here to um, show them a little bit better, make them stand out. We have an internal force um, that we potentially have as a normal force, and that is typically pointed, uh, directed away from our surface, and that will be uh, use a variable letter of n. We have a shear force, and we're going to point that in such a way that it tends to uh, rotate our member clockwise. And then finally, we have a internal bending moment, m, um, and that uh, is directed as shown. And the last things that we need is our coordinate system, X and Y. 
let me just double check we have our forces we get our distances and then that's a completed free body diagram what uh, we'll do now is once again we will solve for our three unknowns and we'll use the three equations of equilibrium to do that. So our first equation we'll use is summing the forces in the x direction and that's equal to zero and so we have a minus n and there's nothing else uh, in the x direction so minus n is equal to zero so what we see is n is equal to zero again that's pretty simple. Um, in the y direction so on the force in the y direction that also is equal to zero and what we have in the y direction is we have our uh, shear force V and that's pointing in the positive y direction we have our um, reaction 8.48 kilonewtons and again that's positive and then we have our distributed load uh, 2 kilonewtons per meter that's acting over three meters and that's in the downward direction so we'll have a negative sign there and the sum of these is equal to zero and what we when we calculate that we have our shear force V is equal to minus 2.48 kilonewtons and so what that means is we just assumed incorrectly uh, which is just fine uh, that our shear force is actually pointing downward not upward the last equation that we will use is summing the moments, and we'll sum the moments about uh, we'll sum the moments about the left-hand side here. When we sum the moments about the left-hand side, we don't need uh, v, um, even though we just calculated it. We just don't need to use it as a variable, so we'll do that. So we're going to sum the moments. I like to put the left side here just for future reference is equal to zero. And let me on my coordinate system just remind us as to which way the positive moment is. It's counterclockwise using the right hand rule. Um, and so what we'll look at first is we'll look at the moment of force from our reaction, our 8.48. So we have 8.48 kilonewtons at a distance of three meters. And that's creating a positive uh, moment. It's in the same direction as our positive coordinate system. And then we have our um, distributed load that's also creating a moment and so we have a 2 kilonewton per meter distributed load it's acting over 3 meters and uh, the resultant of this distributed load is halfway which is 1.5 meters from each end so we'll have 1.5 meters and that is creating a negative moment and then finally, we can't forget our uh, internal bending moment, and that also is creating a negative moment. It's drawn directed opposite of our positive coordinate system. So those three moments is equal to zero. And when we solve M, we get M to be 16.44 kilonewton meters. 16.44 kilonewton meters. Um, and so those are our three internal forces.